20 seconds to fix this? Yeah, I mean, if you can't read it, then fix it. Yeah, it's like the same. You can also just go on the old The old email. Yeah, fair enough. Let me download that. Okay, you two are okay with being filmed? Mm -hmm. He got it on video recording. Got it? All right, let's start to respond to please. Did you send the email? I'm about to. Oh. Yo, judge is good. For sure. Yeah. Let me open it. Okay. So, judge is good? Yeah, cool. Intuition is a medical constraint on ethics as a humor. You cannot derive an offer from it. Is it impossible to derive an offer from an offer? Or you cannot derive through your own solely on the basis of definitions. You know, I make intuitive judgments. Moral intuition is just a faculty of reason applied to a particular subject matter. For instance, it may be argued common is bad because it caused millions of just suppressed premises of life, prosperity, and freedom are good or simply media intuitions and rule consequentialism is the most intuitive ethical theory that's hooker. Rule consequentialism evalu evaluates rules that expect the value of acceptance by the majority. It will endorse rules prohibiting attacking innocent people and taking property, breaking promises, lying. Society where such rules are internalized would have more good in it. Rule consequentialism specifies the underlying principle that provides impartial justification or intuitively possible. A moral second government actions will inevitably lead to trials between citizens. They benefit some harmony. Harmony is the only justified way to resolve, the conflict, resolve these conflicts by benefiting the maximum number of possible people since anything else would unequally prioritize one group over the other. Swallow 97. Public policy here trade offs and policymakers are not justified value conflicts any philosophical since policymakers are required to demonstrate that their policy is sort of the overall advantage of society. Uh. Policymakers, the ethical duty established the possible link between policy returns to the problems they address the scores of the method of youth will impact eight points. High constraint theories are useless for states and still inevitably value some constraint means the question of minimizing the amount of constraints we value. People answer is useful in the nice morality system. Guys, actually, we need to know what to do when faced with imperfect circumstances. If the system is incapable of telling us what to do when violations are inevitable, makes a morality useless. Only useful maintains use functionality. See point takes high index by calculability. The government's already used utility, which means it's possible to do so. Also, means my frame is more probable because it's being used in the, in the real world. Deep point constraint is I co opt appeals to agency because the reason state exists protects population. The only way reason why fame documents like the constitution exist to ensure the state allows the citizens to experience the best possible life. This means access to most well being can first employ intentions are relevant. When possibly just justify their, their actions, they have to justify their based on consequences because they're the only reliable modes of knowledge we have access to. We label and test good based on the consequences of the right. So, utility first, third, uh, and the resolution is valued on deliberative means that the resolution question of states of affairs is Finland, City Guard 12. Not a usual sentence to say that certain states of affairs ought to be the case for some state of affairs being, uh, being best. Nothing directly follows about how any agent has any most recent accurate agents. Those sentences seem to entail uh, claims about the agent's recent actions so to bear uh, directly on their deliberations. We call these readings deliberative. Our wisdom particularly ought to be used as uh, primarily in non-agential uh, sentences. They're commonly used to avoid ambiguity in regards to an agent's ability to deliberate Finland, City Guard 2. A a reason for using the non agent sentence would be that the speaker intends to prevent a reading that would be salient. Non agent sentences clearly resist active voice. The use of inefficient non agent sentence uh, intends a deliber non deliberative set reading since the agent sentence is more efficient. Speakers can be used to uh, use it for more immediately evalu evaluative claims and immediately evaluative all claims. Thus, the standards rule consequentials underneath my standard. We both defend a rule and we evade the, uh, the, uh, the <coughs> <coughs> the values of our respective rules is the impacts of magnitude. Any my framework of high probability expected impacts, for example, take the following rule: sewage to the homework because it, it helps in life. Say the rule is true in every instance except for, except for one. We need to. We expect the way you do your homework will get smarter and better understand your mature. This means the general rule doing your homework is going to need the rule consequentials. Even if one time you did your homework and it caused exchanges that were not tonight, the, the rule imbalance is good. My favorite would still say do your homework and distribute resources. Scarce in any society, which inevitably leads to a society use a really utilitarian calculus because follows the benefits or either an individual enjoys for having certain rights can never be absolute because there can always be an instance where we violate the right in favor of a, a claim made, not made by another society or as a whole. For example, when a SWAT team arrives seen uh, where a gunman is holding uh, someone hostage, we are uh, shooting into the crowd, we justify to violate the hostage right to life in order to mount, uh, uh, stop mounting death offense. First, I advocate United States and national service ought to be compulsory. We will defend conscription or grant reasonable to disadvantage to the FFC, we reserve the right to clarify if you have any questions, ask across the contention one is the imminent threat. The international realm is anarchic and asset proper military resources. States are on the risk of being over and destroyed. This is true. 8.0 international authority can check back states. The international laws always co-opted and manipulated let nations commit egregious violations. Russia is up. Annexation of Crimea proves states need to turn forces. B point game theory if we assume that other nations will not assault us and lay down our arms and other nations ramp up siege dominance. The only possible scenario for survival is taking up arms. We take up uh, arms, we ensure survival no matter what people do. If we don't take up arms, they're only safe 50% of the time. This entails the state should take active steps to ensure the military is full and capable of dealing with the unknown. The state must assume that it's current. Our military resources will not be enough to deal with an imminent threat. If it assumed it had enough, then it would 
or remain complacent while the other nations rape us as such the state should conscript to stop future threats of great magnitude not conscription would overthrow the state and society because it risks destruction so mass mobilization would preserve the state this means that ruling affirms because the rule of conscription is for the past, uh, purpose of maximizing respective well-being the state nature is infinitely worse because uh, individuals have no access to most well-being as the struggle will violate the infinite which means people have no claim to well well-being the state nature condition is a free rider problem asset compulsory service uh, a self-interested people so have no reason to uh, contribute to the common good they would realize the essential services like the military could be accessed even if absent participation uh, promoting this behavior would put the state in jeopardy because it would uh, essential function and underlying rule such that any contribution to take associated risk and penetrable with ones in terms of the public good would maximize societal good excluding free riding and affirming solves their first contributions was uh, a lot crucial services to exist even if scarcity is not present now so by creating a structure that would resolve the imbalance which means sending towards national service better than not attending towards national service to create the necessary infrastructure for state power and for uh, view first one error theory, the meta theory is legitimate. Drop the debate. We need uh, the way to check infinity to be negative. Because one error is too short to go for the drop the argument. Gives the negative too much of a time advantage in the two hundred. Even if the shell is four minutes, the negative double one for five thirty and go for thirty seconds of substance and auto win. Only drop the debate itself. Second fairness, the voter debate is competitive activity that requires voting for the better debate. Or debate was purely an education activity. Then we would just read the dictionary the, at each other, which means that uh, fairness marginally constrained on the activity. This means that a point is always relevant and b point controls the link to educational arguments because absent it, education becomes unfocused and institutional rules are necessary. If there are no binding practice in debate, that, that it's competition, there would be no way to debate. Uh, for example, time constraints exist and we follow them because we, if we did, we would speak over each other not at all. Which we move the point of activity. Uh, this means that you tacitly concede to some institutional rules, so saying they're all bad is contradictory and. Um. Presume after the absence of offense because eight points. Uh, structural uh, skew makes it hard to affirm an NLD is proven by times skew six percent. Next, I bias on a sample size of over thirty two thousand rounds. So in case of time, I will have a overcome the gator ga ga disadvantage. So thus, due to better debating, the B point had the negative strategic advantage of being able to adapt to actually based on the one C while the F comes in and their first speech essentially balanced. D point. If you're testing absolutely better test that FC, uh that could possibly make that situation better than doing nothing. D point. The theoretical presumption comes first because sub before subsequent ones because our arguments are uh, make reference to the structural inequalities that pre preclude me from uh, even accessing the arguments of true presumption in the first place. Second, after the and third. Uh, wait, next argument in the interview, I guess. After you're high slayer. Of the debate, because if I win, uh, it means I was in, uh, unable to argue, uh, answer the arguments in the one scene, including theory top tally, which means the risk that uh, they're wrong, whereas they know my theory arguments are right because I won them. And uh, uh, next, no two in RVS. A point uh, increases the strategy since people determine reading theory largely based, largely based on RVS, the two in RVS score the one error. So yeah, B point two in RVS score the two errors since force the two error to go for theory or the RVS regardless of the one error. So C point it's most irris it's most reasonable. I will RVS my first piece, so they should too. Skip that last argument. That was just part of the draft. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Uh, can you give me the Finley and Sendigar cards? Cause yeah, for, uh, you I sent mean, the framework, like, I, I sent he, you guys should have that version of the app. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I realized that, like, I told you guys that framework could be the same, which means that I couldn't do the, yeah. Oh, is so. it the one from Dog? Yeah, it's the one from there. Is everyone good? All right. Uh, let's talk about the framework. The Finley and Senegar cards, what's the implication of, of the resolution being evaluative? Uh, it means that the resolution ought to be an evaluation of states of affairs. So it's a question of end states? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, then let's talk about the Waller card. Why does this card justify rule utilitarianism? Because it just seems to justify, in general, policymakers are right, just able to make decisions based on consequences. Sure. Uh, our argument is that acutil, acutil and rule utilitarianism are both theories of like maximizing pleasure and minimizing pain. Our argument is that, yes, they're both end space, but the rest of the framework establishes that uh, instead of acutil. So this card just justifies util in general? Like consequentialism, yes. Okay. Um, all right. Then let's talk about the advocacy so national service is compulsory you say you defend conscription so is that solely military service uh we defend the whole resolution oh wait yeah we defend conscription. so it's just military service yeah. like reinstating the draft what's up so it's just military yeah. service like reinstating sure. the draft okay mm -hmm. um then let's talk about the contentions mm -hmm. what offense do you have for or what evidence do you have for an eminent threat existing uh sure so this Seems is the Right, right. So our argument is that the only way a state could justify conscription is when they deem that the threat would be greater than the resources that they already have, which means that... But um, why does this indicate that there are threats coming right now or that justifies national security now in the status quo? Right, our argument that conscription would only be justified in that scenario, right? The argument is that... Wait, so then does the app only defend conscription if there's a threat? What's up? So does the app only defend conscription if there's a threat? Well, so we would say that... Well, so I guess we would defend it like in general, but the argument is that... Uh, underneath utilitarianism, it always outweighs, well, underneath, yeah. How would it always outweigh under util? You're just predicting random future threats that may or may not no, happen. No, the A point and the B point that we make underneath the contention one indicate that we need to build up our military in the face of a threat. Or like... Why does this mean that it outweighs under like, util? That's one contingent on you winning that threats exist in the first place, and two, you have no right, evidence. Right, the A point and the B point indicate that threats exist inevitably, which means that we ought to be prepared for said threats. 
Okay, um, that's fine. The second contention, if people are being forced to do service, then how is that contributing, like, genuinely? Because this seems to be talking about why, like, having social good through people naturally volunteering is good. Uh, underneath rule you two, uh, it wouldn't. I will argue, wait, but I just, I'm just saying. Like so, like, your contention, good. too, is about how people shouldn't be self-interested and they should genuinely care. If you're forcing people to do national interest why, or national service, No, why it's not about genuinely people care? genuinely caring. In fact, the... Well, the first line is about how people should not be self-interested and they should contribute right, to Right, that's just like one word. The rest of the contention establishes that it would be non-utilitarian for people to, uh, like, to, like, free ride. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's talk about the standard, then. Rule mm -hmm. consequentialism, how do we decide what rules are good and what rules are bad? Uh, just like a generic consequentialist like, framing. Like so that. we decide through act util what rules. Wait, are no, 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 no. So, so, so what we say the, the distinction between the two is that um, it, it's like the general principle, which means that it would not require the end of the calculation, it's just that you prove that the rule is bad or good generally. Wait, how do you prove? So okay, I'll start off. How do you prove something bad or good generally? That it happens in most instances of the rule. So it's about the consequences. Okay. Can I use the restroom? Unless you have more expert questions. No, I don't know. Okay, 155. I'll email it. I sent it. Uh, the order is going to be two off and then case, and on case it will start on the interview. two off and then case and on case starting on that. Is everyone good? Mm -hmm. Everyone's good. Okay. Two in case? Yeah, and on case starting on the under you.
First off is the Borders case. Producing civic engagement and social goods through the military is a play on the American ideal of the citizen soldier, a colonial rhetorical strategy that ties our notions of belonging, sacrifice, and acknowledgement to the nation state. Krebs 09. The citizen soldier that veterans and minority groups have been able to offer moving and even effective claims on the grounds of battlefield sacrifice. The citizen soldier ideal has recognized strongly. Women's suffrage reflect the gendered nature of militarized republicanism and its continuing hold of the American imagination. Post war, African American women's for first class citizenship were predominantly framed again battlefield sacrifice. Often militarized civic culture ran for much of the nation's history before the introduction of universal and obligatory military service. Citizen soldiers display values that are central to our nation. The closely related rhetoric of sacrifice and national gratitude is ever replied to regular soldiers as well. Government peons are members of the civil services, uh, service for the organization. Coercion remains present in the still potent form among those who represent themselves as serving at least partly out of patriotic motives. Of of citizen soldier ideals to pay themselves in public sitting. And borders create a mutual xenophobic otherization of those across the border. This creates zones of structural violence that devalue lives. Turns case, Bornstein 2. Border procedures result in rhetoric of real bureaucracies of violence. The border is often part of exploitative systems. Violence is expressed in non strategic. The racial logic for militarized borders often racial and object based material sense of criminalization of undocumented workers, stigmatized distance, and force from the handy of those they exploit. The process of class exploitation or integrated with national violence border is a mechanism of exploitation. Thus, the alternative is to embrace the metaphor of a global community that ruptures the body state. Incorporating parts of each other affirms a form of global citizenship. Official 9. The human body can be studied as a microcosm and can illuminate the assumption of the body and its transplantable parts reveal the values we assign to humanity. The body's disaggregation mirror with national borders. What we don't keep out and what deserves to be secured within the body can now be taken apart and shared. Incorporations of soldiers into our very bodies lead us to forms of community not based on citizenship. Organ for human use the body to illuminate assumptions. Other ideas of global. This takes the Sabbath assumptions that states to take care of bodies in terms of borders. This thought experiment questions the biopolitical order. is important to do early sentences and not support the attention. Thus, the rules about us to question the YNC scholarship prior to the consequences of the plan or prior to their rule. Uh, this is a prerequisite for a couple of reasons. First is that the only way that we can decide whether or not certain rules are good is based on whether or not our mindset for thinking about the rules is, are good in the first place. So if I come up with a rule but I have a racist mindset, my rule is likely going to have racist consequences or just be a racist rule straight up, which is why we need to question the underlying thinking behind it as a prerequisite of the framework. Also, the K turns all the AC offense and specifically links to the first, uh, the first contention and the second contention too. The first contention is talking about how... Um, we need to conscript people to stop eminent threats. This is literally the idea of trying to securitize people along the lines of borders, about how we only view ourselves as valuable when we can tie ourselves to the nation set and defend that seat in the first place. This devalues human, uh, human people and also always on magnitude because this would affect everyone in society. Always on, also, always on, uh, also always on time frame because the likelihood of us being able to decrease these forms of violence is much, much uh, faster than us suddenly being able to predict every single threat that could possibly happen in the future. Also links in the second advantage because it's talking about free riders, but this idea of contributing the communal good uh, can only happen through national service is just another reason that's why you're tying your identity to borders. Also, the K turns the F even on their own framing because they've conceded in we test rules based on their consequences. The consequences of the AF are terrible. Next off is the disad. Compulsory service causes millions to be incarcerated, non compliers are criminalized. Nelson 16. Committee voted to require women to register for compulsory service. Reform makes felons out of women who refuse to participate. Criminalizing large population enforcement was in lockdown for five year sentences. Just 7% were supposed to register and did so. The government was faced far more than refused to register than they had ever imagined. Many are doing their part to render future draft useless millions are breaking the law. And prosecution for non compliance is irrelevant. Extrajudicial penalties marginalized minorities and create poverty. Galvin and Santelli 16. Extrajudicial penalties imposed upon those who choose not to register and make life difficult for marginalized. Objectors lost version on those individuals who cannot register and marginalize those penalties are severe penalty carrying up to five years and a fine of 250000 Dollars denial of aid, job training, and employment extends throughout the life. Minority will miss out on opportunities and lose college loans, loans and citizenship, creating a permanent underclass. Hundreds of thousands have been penalized, penalized without prosecutions of birth. This is a law penalty and alleged offense for which they have not even been charged. This disenfranchises certain groups. Couple implications: the first is that it outweighs the case on magnitude because it would affect all minority groups in society. Also, outweighs on probability because this impact is already beginning to happen in the status quo, and the AF would massively expand that by spreading the law to apply to all people. It also proves that the one EC rule is uniquely bad because of its own context, because the rule would contain things like punishment for that rule. I, we would have to fi find people or send them to jail if they did not follow our rule in the first place, which proves that their rule would be bad because that would end up disproportionately harming certain segments of the population. So it's unjustified even on their own framework because it would cause a net loss of well-being for only certain segments of the population. So their suffering would massively outweigh. Um, case, starting on the underview. Uh, first, their argument about one-error theory is drop the debater. You should, uh, default, you should default to drop the argument if the negative wins that the argument is reasonable in the first place. That, otherwise, it's just incentivized frivolous theory. They could read any random amount of shells in the one AR and just up layer to get rid of all neg offense, and then I would have to answer every single one. This means that every single shell that they read essentially becomes a nib that I have to answer, and I wouldn't be able to win the round at the end of the day, which is clearly unfair and turns all their fairness arguments because I would have to win so many layers, and they could just infinitely up layer. Also, the next argument they have about is presuming AF. You should presume neg because they get infinite prep time before the round, and they also get to choose the ground that they read ahead of round, which means it solves all their structural skew or, or an AF abuse arguments at best, and it also is reason that's why they should be prepared to defend their ground in the first place. So it turns all their fairness arguments because they were the ones who chose what they wanted to defend in the first place. Also, uh, their last argument, uh, they say that the AF theory is the highest layer, but you shouldn't specify it. There's no specific reason as to why the AF specifically theory should be the highest layer besides the time skew justifications, which I've already answered by talking about in uh, the infinite prep time that they get before the round. Theory in general should be a layer, but we should win offense linking back to it and justify why that offense is the most important round. We shouldn't just presume ahead of time but unless because their offense could be really frivolous. Um, now framework. One, vote negative under rule util. The rule of not violating freedom is best because it means that we could never do things that harm people. It even takes out the case argument since people would never be harmed by free riders or aggression. It also means auto negate out of the framework. Not violating freedom is a great rule. People would be so happy. Two, 
Rule useful is the same as act util. Nathanson, no date. For a utilitarian, it's natural to say the rule does not lie except when language are any more good. Suppose a rule utilitarian adopts a rule that would say do x except when x not, and not doing x maximizes utility. This is in fact identical with act utilitarianism. Whenever x action x is the moral requirement, the moral prohibition expressed in these rule collapses to act utilitarian rules. Not only do x when not doing x maximize utility, rule utilitarians face difficult challenges in forming utility based rules that have a reasonable degree of flexibility and together. It means that you can weigh all of my disad impacts and k impacts under a general framework of act util because that's what their framework collapses to. Also, three, Waller and Finley both go nag because they say the government should maximize good consequences. Finley says that you evaluate whether or not the app causes a good state of affairs, not whether it's a good rule. Your framework answers itself. Also, four, rule util is not an adopt the resolution as a rule. It's a rule of joining national service as a good rule, which is defined about determined, which is determined by deciding about whether or not it has good consequences based on how you adopt it. it means that all of my disad offense still links. The disad proves that it doesn't, it's not a good impact. Also, the rule is justified by its consequences and negative proof that the app has bad consequences. Hooker 16, their author. Rule consequentialism claims an act is wrong and only if it's forbidden by rules justified by their consequences. It proves that it causes this. Um, now on the case specifically. Um, as an overview to both contentions, you should err heavily neg on the issue of both contentions because both of their contentions are just analytic hypothetical arguments about how certain things may happen. The disad and the, or and the K are proven scenarios based on empirical situations that have actually proven in the past and we have qualified authors to defend it. We have no idea where his analytics came up through. They're just hypothetical speculations, which means you should automatically err neg here on their question of offense. Also, since I'm winning that their framework collapses to act util, I'll just read a bunch more disads to their contentions and that's a reason to negate. Turn. Conscription would create the illusion that we have infinite soldiers and seduces leader in spiraling isolation. Vietnam proves Feldman 12. And each about Vietnam is addressing Americans before the war until nearly 55 150,000 troops were on the ground exceeding mass movements in Iraq and Afghanistan that you draft the illusion that we had unlimited man behavior. It's seduced our leaders in spiraling isolation. Not least because it caused not death, because more people ended up going to war. Also, turn problems exacerbated when there's no demand for uh, recruits. Overcrowding is dangerous and allows the government to treat workers as expendable. Chapman 2. We eliminated the draft because armed sources found that they needed a few recruits. Unfairness of the draft became more apparent. Government took advantage of free supply of unlimited manpower by underpaying servicemen and losing many recruits. If personally trained for a few months, he would be worse than useless. He would be dangerous. Proves that even if they have a risk of resolving threats in the world of the AC, they would be much, much worse because we'd send untrained people to do that, which caused increased amounts of casualties because they're not able to conduct themselves in war. Also, conscription would cause crime and massive inequalities. Fractures, protests, Hobbes and Linson 16. Our paper stands out by studying modern day cohorts using confronts for the set of market outcomes, applying new identification to have further clean evidence of inclusion effect, which have significantly increased likelihood of crime and number of crimes between 23 and 30. Uh, mark the card at 30. I didn't uh, read the right, so cards Which that. stuff did you read? Um, from the Lindquist 16, uh, Joel Marson and Lindquist 16, mark that at 30, and then I didn't read the two cards below that. Give me one second, I'm marking the card. I read everything else. Sweet. Um, is everyone ready? Yeah, cool. Uh, status and KL? Disposition. Uh, what's the condition? Uh, if you win offense against the KL, I have to go for it, but otherwise I can kick it. All right, cool. Um, so now let's talk about the, let's talk about the, uh, the KL again. Uh, what's the actor? Um, people in society. Cool. Members of the global community. Yeah, sounds good. Let's talk about the role of the ballot. What is this? It's to question the 1AC scholarship prior to the consequence of plans. So we question the lenses in which you view your knowledge or how you create your knowledge and come up with what thinking and what modes of thinking is valuable. We question that and see whether or not that is good or bad before we evaluate whether or not the consequence of the AF or the rule of the AF is something that is good. Oh, uh, why? Okay, there's a couple justifications for this. First is that if we have a um, incorrect lens um, when we create our rules, that will probably lead to bad outcomes because, for example, if I have a really sexist lens or I'm a really sexist person and I come up with a rule, my rule is Wait, likely to be sexist or have Wait, do you ever justify like intentions mattering? It's not a question of intentions. It's a question right, of right, right. So here's my question. the if scholarship I have sexist behind the 1AC. Right, right, think about this. If I have a sexist intentions but the act still turns out to be a good thing, uh, then... My argument is that the act would probably not turn out to be a good thing and your evaluation why? of whether or not that act why? would turn out to be a good thing why? would be based on that sexist lens. So wait, if wait, I'm wait, a sexist wait. person and I think an action look, is good. Look, look here's it my could question. Be a here's my question. Action. Here's my question. My argument is if an act, if an if an action turns out to have good consequences, but there's a bad intention behind it, where do you ever it's justify not a question intentions, of intentions being relevant? My argument is that the consequences that you're thinking about as good yes, would it's be a question based of under of a my flawed frame. Those my, consequences my, would not even be yes, good. Yes, but where do you justify that frame, that intention mattering, rather than just the consequences? The K justifies it. The argument is that your scholarship is bad. Where? All the cards in the K. The first Krebs card is talking about how when we have this ideal of a citizen soldier, it ties people's identities yeah, where does that ever justify intentions state? or the framing being relevant rather than just It justifies looking at the framing behind national service, i.e. the context behind it and why it happens. Every line in the card. So the card is talking about how um, often when we have claims for first class citizenship or having like battlefield sacrifices, um, groups of disadvantaged statuses often like Okay, are can you explain to, to me the, uh, the warrant inside the link evidence? Can you explain to me the warrant inside the link evidence? Cool. So the Krebs evidence is talking about 
Uh, first, when we become a citizen soldier, the idea of service to a nation on the battlefield reinforces the thing of borders because you're literally defending the U.S. as a nation, defending it against possible threats. That's the action of the NYC. Um, the next argument that this card makes is that um, minority groups have been, uh, like, they've been trying to gain upward mobility by tying their identity to, to the nation state, but that is net worse for them because the nation state ends up oppressing them because they're seen as other in society. So, like, for example, um, after World War II and after World War I, lots of black people in society um, had these narratives okay. of, like, hey, That's I did fine. military sacrifice. Uh, so to- let's talk about the... Uh, the underview stuff you read. So you said uh, if you win reasonability on the shell, that means that it's dropped the argument. Um, I didn't say win reasonably. I said if I win, that the neg action is reasonable. So, so reasonability. Sure. Okay. Let's talk about this like other argument. You said infinite prep time. What is this a turn against? Um, your fairness and presume app arguments. What do you mean? Fa- okay. You said fairness and time skew inside bias is a voter. It's an argument against that. It's a vote. Okay. Or right. reason to presume that. Cool. 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 Starting prep now. What was the response to F theory as a high theory? Um, my argument was that we should judge what the, this isn't first. This isn't a specific warrant for why F theory comes first. That's answered by all of my arguments about infinite prep and time skew. And second, we should judge which the, what the highest layer in the, in the theory debate is based on the arguments in the theory debate because you could otherwise just read a ton of really frivolous shells and be like, that's the highest layer. And then I have okay. to answer all of them. I still can't win. Okay, cool. Um, so 130 remaining. So the order will be under the F, new off, AC, and then the NC in the order was red. All the judges are ready. Should do good. For sure. 
It's the one three minutes. Here's the Jimmy drop the bitter. Oh, we need to wait to chicken for the negative use, which is one hour. So also extend that the one hour is way too short to go for drop the argument, uh, which gives the negative way too much of an advantage, which means that even if you're winning your, uh, uh, even if you're winning your reasonability arguments, that is not a reason that it is a structural disadvantage. Uh, that uh, drop the bitter creates, we uh, drop the argument creates, which means that the, this argument, even if you, every shell becomes necessary insufficient, but the two one hour has a time to respond to these and win substance, which means that drop the argument is uh, insufficient. Additionally, they say infinite prep time, but extend the empirics arguments off the presumed uh, presumption arguments, which means that there is a, uh, which, which proves that there is uh, the negative side bias, which means they always, uh, which means that this turns back, which means this outweighs the uh, infinite prep time argument because uh, uh, because it's an empirics which is uh, empirically proven where it's just the theorizing of a certain debater. Now let's go to the... Uh, yeah, now new interpretation. If the negative defends an alternative accuracy, that the actor of that accuracy must be the same actor that the one uh, front of accuracy uses to qualify. You must have the United States federal government acting. Your accuracy is a violation. They say in cross-examination that the uh, the person who enacts the alternative is just people, uh, the global people. See the standards. The reason for fiat abuse alternative actors without the negative fiat the object of the planet away. This puts terminal defense of the one who sees the back lanes. I mean the neg not have to defend solve. See deficits. We know that marginalized bodies are being oppressed by the state. The one who sees potential combat that by offering the right to uh, the uh, the conscription because it solves talks problems about you fiat the object of the aft the, the people away by saying that they rectify all state-based issues. This makes impossible. The aft to generate offense on the issue. Okay, the neck just waves away all issues away with the fiat wand. You don't have to defend problems with the implementing alternative because you fiat perfect solvency. That's key to fairness because you like, get qualitatively much better uh, arguments on the ballot uh, on top of making the YC move. This is a, a worse violation of fairness. There's literally no way to argue, argue, argue against profession. This also links to your role ballot, not ways are your issue. Your practice is unrealistic and incapable of being judged in a world with no solvency deficit. You mean you can never test your alternative to see if it's uh, feasible or not. This means you actively destroy the potential for meaningful discussion on the issue because you size up the issue and uh, uh, cross by drop the debater on here. Uh, additionally, uh, competing, interpretations, uh, competing interpretations is a crazy best uh, norm for the, deba uh, for the debate community. Additionally, and um, extend a, a new tune on RVIs, which means that this is a no risk shell. They've conceded this, which means that it's most reciprocal. They didn't need to warn RVIs in the first piece, too. Uh, so now, AC. Uh. Real utility is distinct from act utility. A point act utility requires that we have access to all relevant information in order to make a decision that's impossible to do. For example, if a baby was drowning, real utility will tell us to consistently save the baby if there was harm to ourselves, but act utility will be incapable of deciding that because it would require that we knew the identity of the baby and who the baby would be in the future. If the baby was Hitler, then act utility would say, let him drown. This makes act utility incoherent because we are incapable of making consistent decisions. B points agents are biased when it comes to making cost benefit decisions on the thought. We might underestimate harm to others when it comes to benefiting ourselves and so on. Inherent bias on cognitive processes and determinations in the act utility destroys our governmental accountability. Citizens think government will act in a biased way manner, then decisions can never be justified actually. Act adequately kills the fact of making accountability. Which the Waller says is key to uh, proper obligations, which means that uh, we are winning two reasons uh, for why act utils is distinct from rule utils. Now extend the, the uh, contention office, which says that. Uh, um, now extend the uh, now extend the uh, the, uh, the human reference which says intuitionism is a meta constraint and extend that the hook reference which says that uh, rule utils rule utils most intuitive ethical, ethical theory and this justifies consequentialism uh, which means that uh, and now we have to with the contention extend the imminent threat arguments which says that uh, no international authority can check back states I uh, empirically proven with Russia also uh, and this entails that states must take the ability to uh, deter threats which is constituted this means that you rule utils auto affirms because rule is conscription is for uh, maximizing respect well being this is uh, 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 which is the reason for we're automatically winning the substance debate now on um, on. Um. Uh, so yeah, now additionally Rule utility excludes your dissets and your turns first. This is the uh, most, ex most expected outcome. Things about when you uh, simulate an experiment, if uh, out of a thousand runs the simulation, you get uh, a 990 times the expected value is x. Your, uh, your argument is predicated on a specific spatial temporal setting, which is a one time deal. Be a second is by internalizing a rule society. Internalizing a rule society, you don't, want, uh, you don't do x at one time, even though it's good most times to stop extension, which would uh, make sense for it to analyze uh, because it was good on balance, which means it takes out your disadvantages of a specific argument. also takes out the link to the critique because it's uh, another specific example. Uh, uh, another spe specific example, i.e., uh, historical examples, but not specific to the general rule. Also takes out the turns because these are just, uh, again, specific. Isolations, but not the uh, the problems with the rule in general. Now let's go to the critique. Uh, uh, first off, they never just find intentions to be relevant with the framing debate, which is all we need to do is with the uh, the consequences of the affirmative is, uh, is is being better, which means that this, the, 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 the which means that the one you see outweighs on a question of uh, a game theory, uh, uh, outweighs on a question of imminent threats. Additionally. Uh, uh, additionally, permutation do both. There's no reason for the scholarship and the policy of the affirmative are incompatible. Uh, their arguments are simply about, 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 about the links of the, of the criticism, but, there are, but, but the argument here is that these are just historical examples, but not uh, problems with the rule in general, which means that even if you weigh the, the rule ballot, the rule you chose a meta is a constraint underneath it.
Okay, it's attaching. Okay, I sent it. going to be theory, AC, K, descend. Say one more time. Theory, AC, K, descend. Cool. Did you get it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is everyone good? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Everyone good now? that it spends way too long reading theory to answer any of my specific arguments about why real util defaults to act util, which means as long as I win, uh, as long as I beat back theory and win a risk of my uh, act util arguments, it means that I'm automatically winning the highest layer of offense under that because the one here also does no weighing. So now theory. First, counter interpretation. The AF may defend a different actor, or the neg may defend a different actor from the AF if they had a qualified solvency advocate. I mean, because the solvency advocate is the alternative text, means that you, would, you should be able to prepare against this because the AF has a specific link to the AF about why citizenship uniquely causes borders to be re uh, reinformed and the, uh, the actor of the solvency, uh, the actor of the alternative and the solvency advocate resolves all your offense because it proves that you should be able to prep for this ahead of time. There is no fiat abuse because it's a specific interaction with the after means any disad that you can re win about why your actor is a net better implementer than my actor is a reason as to why you get offense against the critique in the first place. Means you get more ground in the world of the after means it outweighs fiat abuse, but also two counter interpretation. The neg may defend a different actor from the affirmative solves all their offense because it just proves that they would be able to generate the same disads. The argument that I just said still applies. They would be able to get more offense. So now the standard is proper. First, their argument about fiat abuse makes no sense. It just says that we would fiat the object of the ask plan away, but that's clearly not what happens and not what I did in the the first place this makes absolutely no sense because fiat abuse wouldn't actually happen because it proves that any kind of uh, any kind of uh, actor that the AF, uh, that the neg has, has that is different from the AF would have to be justified i wouldn't just be able to magically fiat away every single problem that the AF solves because there would be no one to back up those claims in the first place so it would mean no evidence supporting my position because it would just be one random assertion that i made in the first place so this kind of fiat abuse is something that would never win rounds in the first place and the massive amount of ground that they would gain from being able to leverage disads against against a different actor would outweigh any risk of fiat abuse because it would be more fair for them because they get access to even more ground and also more educational because now we can talk about more aspects of the AF. also their next argument is that it's uh, eternal defense to the impact and the rules of outclaim. But first, there's a couple issues with this. Uh the main reason that the, uh, the the first issue with this is that um, the AF should be prepared to defend their um, AF against all possible lenses in, 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 the, in the debate, which means they chose their ground, so they, would, they should have to defend it. It turns their case under fairness and education because you, they've conceded my arguments on the underview, which can cross my here, about how they get infinite prep time and they also get to choose their own ground, which takes out all their fairness claims and takes out all their presumed AF claims. Also takes out the drop the debater claims because they say that you should check abuse because it's too short and that you should resolve for side bias. But my argument is that having infinite prep time and choosing your ground is what, how do you resolve for side bias? You resolve side bias by writing a good plan, not by winning theory all the time, which means theory should be dropped the argument in this place. My, uh, my case is uh, uniquely reasonable. You should use reasonability with the right line of turn ground. They could have read any reason, uh, any disad to my specific actor that turns the all, or they could have just read reasons or permutations about why the AF is, uh, about why the AF is not better to resolve borders, or they could have impact turned the K in the first place. There are so many ground options for them that it's ridiculous if you decide to vote on the fairness voter at the end of today's debate, which means they, I, would, I would increase the amount of ground that they have in the first place. So my count, you should use reasonability over competing interpretations. The only argument they make in the 1AR for this is that it's a good norm, but reasonability is net better because it, it deters for theory. That's the argument that I made in the 1NC. Otherwise, they would just read a ton of shells that were dropped the beta in competing terms and I would auto lose. They would essentially become nibs. So vote neg on theory, default to reasonability. This shell is ridiculous. Uh, now the AC. The issue is that the 1AR does a lot of overview ad work on the, on the AC, but it doesn't do enough there. Their first argument is that we need to make necessary rules and it's not act utilitarian. But the Nathan's argument takes this out. They've conceded that rule util is act util because the way that we determine what rules are good is based on their consequences, i.e. if they maximize general well-being. So the rules that we would think are good are always the rules that maximize well-being. So even if they win that rule util is true, I'm still winning that at the end of the day, it devolves to act util. They're just going about a long and complicated process to get to act util in the first place. So it means all of my disad impacts still matter because I prove that they make well-being net worse. They've also conceded the hooker evidence, which is their own author, talking about how we shouldn't adopt the resolution resolution as a rule and decide about that rule. The way that we decide about rules is deciding about the implication of that rule. So I, if we adopt the resolution as a rule, we decide whether or not it's a good rule based on the consequences of it. So we need to look to my disads and their AC offense and weigh those in comparison because that's the only way that we decide whether or not our impacts are good based on the consequences. Um, 
They also conceded that their own authors, Waller and Finley, go aft. That takes out their second argument that they excited about how the aft would kill um, actions because Waller takes this out. Waller and Finley go decisively neg on this question because it's a question in general about how we should look to end states. It justifies util as a whole, not rule util. So vote neg on this question. Um, the last thing, they send their framework as a reason to auto-affirm because they would maximize well-being, but all of the disoffense prove this all. They also conceded the first argument that I made on framework in the 1 and C about how their framework means that you should auto-negate. We should default to a rule of maximizing freedom in the first place because whenever we coerce people, it means that uh, that, would, that would be unjust, uh, unjust justify dignitations of women. And they've also conceded that this resolves all of their offense because there would be no amount of threats and there would be no amount of free riding because people would not be able to coerce other people or decide when to do actions. So a rule of maximizing freedom and having that freedom in the first place is net better because it results in better consequences for people because people can do what they want. So at best, this is just defense to auto affirm. You should evaluate based on consequences, but they also dropped it so you can auto negate under their framework. Um, so their last argument. They say that the rule would, uh, the last argument is that the rule util excludes decide because it's about simulations. But they've conceded all my arguments about the way. It's about the consequences and whether or not that's relevant. So now the K. Uh, first, they have no unique offense on the K against the alternative, so I'm not going for the K as a reason to vote negative. I'll concede the permutation as a test of competition means that the offense on the K is not unique. They can't go for this as an advocacy in the two air because uh, it's just a test of competition, not a reason why you should vote the offense is not unique. Now the decide. The dissent is just straight up conceded in the 1AR. All of my reasons as to why it outweighs still apply. It outweighs on magnitude and probability. The Nelson and Galvin and Santelli evidence is very clear on this question. If we have a system of compulsory national service, this results in more people being criminalized because they don't want to do service. So i.e. minority populations and low-income populations who believe that the state has not given them any reason to give this service to the state in the first place would try and opt out of the population and would end up being uniquely criminalized because there would be laws and fines against them and they would end up going to jail. But also, they would, uh, they would, uh, there's a second reason as to why they would be criminalized. It's because they would try to uh, go out, get out of going to the military because they believe that the military wouldn't make them enough money in the first place and they would prefer keeping their job and normal life in the first place, which means their, uh, the impact of their app is uniquely bad for well-being because it's net worse for minority populations and, po and populations in poverty. So they've conceded the reason why it outweighs, so I'll just extend those. First, it outweighs on magnitude because it affects all low-income people in society, which outweighs under frame of, <coughs> under frame of well-being. Also, always on probability because the impact is already beginning to happen in the status quo. There's only risk that the app makes it much, much worse. So their last two contentions are just like threat risks and free riders. I'm decisively winning the debate here. They have no evidence for that and they conceded that you should prefer evidence over their just random empirical warrants. There is no threat and no free riding. They haven't proven empirical claims for this. The dissent is completely empirical. So the round breaks down very easily. Don't vote on theory. It's ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense. You should default to reasonability and their framework means act util or it just or it means act util which means vote on the dissent or it means auto negate because they straight up conceded that. Easy night ballot. I've got a minute thirty remaining. Starting now. Oh, also, my counter trip accidentally said the word af. I said neg instead, just to make sure you got that. What was the, what, did you make any arguments underneath the second counter interpretation? Yeah. What were the arguments? Because uh, so I, I had a lot of them flowed as an, under my interpretation. I was just wondering what you had under the second counter interpretation specifically. It solves our offense because you can read decides about the actor being different, so any reason about why the United States is better than the global population would be good. You can generate solvency deficits, generate offense, impact turning the K through that, much more ground for you, which is much more fair for you. Cool. Rather, actually, where do you guys have the paradigm issues on theory flowed? Uh, do you have it on the one ear, like on the underview of the app, or do you just have it on the shell proper? Interview it is. Interview it is. Cool. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. 
Extend the fairness photo. This means all the education office the last speech goes away. Additionally, extend the uh, the one or two student and uh, and drop the beta. The argument here is that they, uh, they, they their arguments are predicated on the winning reasonability, which means insofar as we deny that reasonability, or if we if we meet, if we prove that they don't meet their own bright line of reasonability, that means that uh, you always default to competing interpretations and they do not get access to drop the argument. Additionally, uh, drop the debater on one of your shells is specifically he even if they're not winning a reasonability because the argument is that drop the argument lets them uh, win substance in thirty seconds and go for and, and lets them and lets them spend all the time on theory debate even if they uh, even if she did not use that strategic advantage. The argument is that that strategic advantage, that strategic advantage is still there. Uh, so, which means that uh, the one or shells drop the debater. Uh, also means that uh, the oh yeah. So let's do that's the, now. Let's go to the interpretation. Extend the fiat abuse standard. The argument is that the affirmative fiat the object of the, the negative fiat the object of the people who are uh, the one ECOA, i.e., the one is trying to help the uh, society that defends, i.e., the American citizens. But the argument is that the affirmative uh, uh, fiat those people away, which means that uh, this, uh, uh, that, which means that a lot of the counter interpretation office does not solve, but uh, uh, we will make arguments for why uh, they do not solve specifically on the uh, line by line. Additionally, extend the argument that uh, the affirmative can fiat, the negative can fiat perfect solvency, which means that uh, even if we do have all the sorts of prep that they say we can read, that means that none of them link to the uh, critique, which means that the fairness offense is still irrelevant. So now let's go to the a specific counter interpretations of the first one about solvency advocate. Uh, this uh, this counter interpretation does not solve anything. Because even if you do have a solvency advocate, uh, that does not mean that you can. Uh, that, uh, even if you do have a solvency advocate, uh, that, uh, that that does not mean that uh, it doesn't solve anything. Because there's like. This is the argument is not about predictability, right? Sure, I can prep for them, but the argument is that the arguments are qualitatively a, a point qualitatively terrible. But the B point is that you can fiat all of these solvency, you can fiat perfect solvency, and fiat the and I fiat the object of the one you see away, which means that that the, having a solvency advocate does not deny your ability to still do that. This does not resolve any of the offense. But additionally, uh, now on the they they say that uh, I have I, I can just win reasons for why my actor is better than uh, your actor. But you're after the people that I'm trying to help. How do I turn the citizens of America? That doesn't make any sense. Now, uh, of the second counter interpretation, they say that it's a, a different actor, which gives me uh, uh, far more ground, and I can read disads to that actor. But that does not make it, that, that does not make any sense because the argument is that I cannot read disads because you can just uh, fiat perfect solves, and I can't read uh, read disads to my own uh, people. Now they say that um, uh, they say that uh, uh, the the role about, uh, they say that the the, the, the role about has to be justified. But yes, it ha does have to be justified for it to be an argument. But the argument is that even if it is justified, I cannot read I cannot generate uh, turns against it or read solves index or implementation. And dies because uh, of how uh, perfect the fiat is. Additionally, extend the uh, and extend the arguments for why. Uh, the, uh, which means yes, yeah. Uh, uh, so now on the reasonability bright line, a point they don't meet their own reasonability bright line because even if there is turn ground, it's qualitatively terrible as per my interpretation. Uh, the B point here is that they have they say I have a whole lot of ground options, but there is no ground options insofar as I cannot indict your author and the, your your actor in the first place. The, the B point here is that this just fiat's perfect solvency, uh, which means that even if there is ground options, they're qualitatively bad, which means underneath the fairness model, uh, we're still winning. They say that. Uh, so yeah, the wrong breaks down, I think, pretty clearly. They, all of their offense is not predicated on the fiat abuse thing. They can fiat perfect solvency, they fiat the object of the affluent, which means even if there's so much ground, it's qualitatively terrible, plus we can't read it. Good right.
Is he... Where's my water bottle? Under the table? Oh no, not that one. It's like orange. What's that? It was probably in the cafeteria. Okay. Do I lost my spider in my bottle? My spider in my bottle? Water bottle? Do you remember that one? It's like a huge chunk of my debate career. Thanks so much to me.
He's up there. He's up there.
I'll tell you after this. Oh, I thought that was like a translation error. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> It's me. Wait, so, so which issue are we talking about? What? Are we talking about the competing interp stuff? 
I'm just I'm talking about the norm that you're rule justice. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, right. Like potential Sorry. abuse, I see as yes, she could run something that's perfect fiat. I don't think that she is. I don't think we're winning those arguments. Um, and I don't know that that's the, the the norm that is being set, right? Um, you can see that there is turnaround on her counterclaim. You can see that like it also. Uh, that it creates a situation where um, you should be able to prepare infinitely for how it affects different groups and different bodies in the resolution, specifically the government and or the people. I didn't understand your argument, to be fair, about the, uh, I didn't understand your argument about how you would have to turn against your own citizens or fiat against the own American citizens. Can I try to explain it now? Sure. Okay, so, so, so the app was like, uh, we do something because it benefits like the societal good or whatever, like maximize the credit well-being, which is for the society, right? Like American citizens, which means that if she gets to fiat away the people that we were trying to help, right? She gets to say the people that you're trying to help engage in like this thought experiment bubble thing where, uh, which means that she fiats away the object, right? Like the people we were trying to help, which means that uh, I can't question ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying I didn't understand how uh, how that argument was, was operating. Um, I, I think that the main thing is is that neither one of you is going enough line by line. Um, I think the two and R should probably predict that the uh, two AR is going to go for theory, given the amount of time that's spent on the one AR, um, and just go after the line by line arguments a little bit better. I think the same thing is true for the two AR. Is it's just you leave a lot of arguments undercover. So when theory is the only offense the app is going for the end of the debate, and I see that both could be potentially abusive strategies, right? Um, to just use perfect fiat, which I don't think happens, or for you to run a whole bunch of the theory shells that then become nibs, right? I think probably both those things are bad for the debate, and I don't think either of them are really happening in the debate. So I think that uh, if I'm, I think that her, her arguing that we should be able, you should be able to prepare before the debate round about how this is going to affect the American people, um, stuff like orders or stuff like incarceration and disenfranchisement, then you should probably take that into account. Um, I think that that's reasonable enough. Um, so, um, what should we call it? Oh yeah, so so what arguments did I undercover in the two ER, like the line by line was? Uh, I don't think that you cover any of the stuff that talks about having infinite prep time or that um, your arguments could easily become, your norm could easily become something that justifies the app running a whole bunch of nibs in a Wait, wait, give me one second. What was the second argument? Uh, I got infinite prep time, what was the one the I heard? Okay. The app could just justify running a whole bunch of short theory arguments around a small contention, right? So like, it used to happen with a couple teams that run polls all the time, that have like large overviews and underviews. I'm sorry, could you explain that? I just, like, I just mm -hmm. never under, like, what was the argument? That your arguments can become nibs, like all of your, you could have lots and lots of interpretations. It's just as much as she could, like, uh, fiat. Is, is this like a one-year theory bad argument? I it's, guess I just it's don't. being able to run a whole bunch of, like, I don't understand your question. Eric's explaining the warrant in the one-year yeah. theory bad in the Wait, so, so this is a one-year theory bad argument? Yes. Okay, cool. Right. Sounds good. Um, so, in any case, I don't feel comfortable voting in, like, that there was abuse. Definitely it's a potential abuse argument, but it's uh, the specificity of how much abuse is going to occur in later rounds isn't very quantifiable uh, or isn't quantified. Uh, I wish you would have gone for some degree of substance in the framework, and I think that you could have, like, I don't know. I just don't know why framework gets so undercovered and why it's not gone for the 2 ER. Do you think there would have been an easier substance 2 ER than 3 2 ER? I would be interested in hearing what that 2 ER sounds like. Okay. Considering I didn't find the persuade, it very persuasive to go all the theory. Yeah, fair enough. Let's stop being dropped. Cool. What about you guys? Did you guys think 